Hi everyone, I'm Ricardo Gonsalves. Well, the Commonwealth Bank has posted a better than expected half-year cash profit of $4.47 billion, even though it was down more than 4%. So to tell us more, I'm joined by the CEO of the Commonwealth Bank, Matt Common. Matt, thank you very much for your time. I do want to start, first of all, though, with the Banking Royal Commission. One year on, what's changed at the bank? Well, a number of things have changed. We've put huge investments into our management of non-financial risk in particular, a huge commitment towards delivering better customer outcomes. That was one of the things that we called out in the result today. One of the reasons why our result was uh, down 4% year on year is because we made a number of fee and pricing changes over the course of the last 12 months that delivered $415 million of better value to our customers and less revenue to the Commonwealth Bank. What does today's result say about the bank's operating environment? I think what it shows is that the context is clearly more challenging for financial institutions with lower interest rates. It does put pressure on, on revenues. We feel that we've operated well within that context and some of the core parts in the way we serve our customers, uh, both with their transaction banking or deposit needs. Uh, we've lent more than $50 billion to home lending uh, and $19 billion to our business lending customers to help them facilitate uh, growth within their businesses. So clearly the context has shifted uh, for financial institutions and we're adapting to that. What does your mortgage book say about the direction of the housing market? Well, we saw a, a strong recovery in the housing market towards the second half of last calendar year. And we saw a, a strong improvement in prices, particularly in Sydney and Melbourne and Brisbane where of course there had been some falls in markets like Sydney up to 17%, about 14% in Melbourne. So a strong recovery at the back end of last year. And as we look forward into this year, we believe house prices nationally are probably gonna grow at about uh, 6% on a national basis, probably slightly more than that in markets like Sydney and Melbourne. We did see a number of first home buyers and owner occupied customers who are looking to purchase their first home come into the market at the end of last year. Uh, so far pretty subdued appetite from investors, but it does feel like the housing market did turn a corner last year and is likely to continue to perform reasonably strongly this year. Matt, last week the Reserve Bank said that loyal bank customers are paying higher mortgage rates than new customers. Is that fair? No, I don't think so. I mean, today is part of the results briefing. We did talk a lot about uh, some additional disclosure we provided, the pricing differences between uh, customers that are getting very strong offers in the market today and how that may have compared in the past. There's no escaping the fact that home lending is very competitive. It's a lower credit growth environment. Many financial institutions are offering uh, very sharp pricing to try and win over new customers. And of course, it's a fair issue to call out and it should be incumbent on institutions such as us to make sure that all customers are getting a fair and appropriate deal. We talked about the $133 billion of repricing that we've done over the last three years, making sure that our customers were getting better rates. And it's one of the, the continuing issues that we need to steer in to, to make sure that we're equally rewarding our new as much as our loyal customers. Now, we've heard from some ratings agencies saying that the coronavirus is credit negative for the banks. Just how concerned are you about the outbreak? Well, we've certainly been watching it closely. Uh, we have some operations in both Shanghai and Beijing and different parts of Asia and Hong Kong and Singapore where clearly there's been more of an interruption, as much for the safety and well-being of our people. As we've looked more broadly, you know, exposure to industries like uh, tourism, education, there's a lot of foreign students that come into uh, the Australian economy and market. We've looked at some of the corporates that maybe have supply chains that are interrupted. Overall, we don't think it's going to have a particularly significant impact, uh, but we do think it's going to weigh on expectations and sentiment in the, the third and fourth quarter of this financial year. But we're hoping, of course, like everyone would be, that the virus is well contained. And then at the back end of this calendar year, economic growth rebounds uh, into more aligned with what the RBA is forecasting. And what's your read on the outlook for the Australian economy in general? Well, we still remain optimistic about the long-term fundamentals of the Australian economy. Uh, I mean, the government fiscal position is in a very strong position. We've, we believe the investments in infrastructure are going to serve the country well and will be a stimulus. I think the housing market, both stabilising and now slightly growing, is a good sign uh, of positive sentiment. 
likely to see a pickup in construction. So notwithstanding the fact that there are some global uncertainties and some risks, particularly in the near term, and of course the tragic results from the bushfires, we still remain optimistic about a reasonable level of growth for the Australian economy in 2020. And of course, we'll do whatever we can to support our customers and help that facilitate economic growth in the economy. Okay, Matt Common from the Commonwealth Bank, thank you very much for your time.